Okay, we're going to look at some basic correction for contrast and color on a clip in Adobe Premiere CS6. So I've got some um, footage and clips on here, but we'll, we'll have a look at how contrast can be changed and a number of different ways it can be changed and also what happens when you do change a clip. Now, I've dragged this clip on here. This is just a still image and it's a grayscale card. Now, we're going to look at what happens as we change contrast because like if you change contrast of a photograph in Photoshop, you can reduce the quality of the image and certainly when it comes to video um, adjustment of contrast and color you can get what's called artifacts where things distort or pixelate or or what they call blow out um, or you lose detail out of your image now here we have a grayscale card good range of shades from you know bright white to solid black now it's important also to realize that sometimes on televisions and different types of monitors sometimes it can't show the whole range so so sometimes you know it has a lot of trouble showing you know total black so sometimes you have to reduce the output levels which we'll look at in a minute now quick way of doing it would be to uh, go to the effects and then we'll go down to video effects and you go to uh, adjust um, color correction now in here we've got brightness and contrast so we look at brightness and contrast first so we just drag this and drop it on top of the clip and once we've got that if we go up to the effects you will see it has brightness and contrast on here now this is windows a little bit closed off here if I click on that it'll sort of spread it out so here are the two sliders for brightness and contrast so first we'll we'll just take the um, brightness up and as you get the brightness goes up you'll see here the white is increasing and also we've lost some of the solid black so as we take it up what you're doing in effect is reducing your tonal range and this is sort of blowing out so if you have something on your image that is that is quite white as you take the contrast up it will just have no detail in there at all now if I take that back down here um, also if we drag out the contrast you will see the same thing happening look at that certainly the blacks increasing so the amount of midtones we've got is getting squeezed so we're reducing it so that's what the effect it has when you when you're doing that with certainly brightness and contrast now another thing to look at would be the window menu and we go down to the reference monitor and the reference monitor comes up in here so I'll move that around now I'll show you as I drag it up again see what's happening here we're sort of squeezing it in if you see this cross here we're pushing it in and that's the the range that it's having now so as I keep on going it's reducing it so it gives you a good idea of how it's reducing it idealistically you need to have a good tonal range with this spread out right across uh, same thing would happen if we did this it would just move the whole um, levels up to make it more brighter so ideally you know it needs to be sort of more or less in the center with a good range now that's looking at brightness contrast that might work for you um, if you're only going to slightly tweak it we'll look at another way I'll just get this um, I'll go up here and I click on that and if I just clear that it'll clear it off the clip so that's gone now the next thing I'll do um, is I look for fast color correction so if I go down go to fast color correction this time I drop it on the you can as we had it before it might appear here but you can do that and bring it up so we've got all this is how you would change the color but if we go a little bit further down it's got these these are quite important to look at now these are the um, input levels and the output levels. As we mentioned before, sometimes with, with television, um, obviously it's always improving with monitors, but sometimes they can't handle a, a, a really large dynamic range of tones. So it might be the case that sometimes you have to you know, take this up so it can't show you know, pure black. It might be the case you're looking at 15 or 16. 
you might have to do some research on that to find out what output you're going to do and that will just sort of restrict it within that range so so there isn't any issues to do with that but do research on certainly it's called gamma um, gamma or in dynamic range for for televisions now up at the top uh, we have the the input levels now if you look at these sliders i guess you can look at the black one as the shadow detail or the blacks and you can look at the one that's over on the other side here the whites that's for highlights and the mid tones is general all the tones in between the two now you can bring these in and reduce it and if we see the same thing sort of happening as we had before when we bring in the um the highlights I'll bring up the reference monitor, and here's the reference monitor which I'll put down here. Now, the same thing sort of happening as we bring these in. Um, that's moving it up with the brightness and contrast, so so it is having some sort of effect on it. But you'll see the there's still a reasonable amount of range in there, and it's also just squashing some of them up. And then if I go to the uh, highlights or the blacks, it's doing that as well. But you'll see it's still holding up because it's pushing everything along. So really we're still getting a reasonable tonal range in there because it's just squashing them along. I'll just drag this back out. What you can do, and the best bet would be to probably your mid-tones here, this slider that you change the gamut on there. Now as we do that, you'll see it'll sort of bow a bit. So as you look at your graph, it's sort of bowing it, squeezing it up a little bit. But you'll see you're not losing as many of the tonal range in your image. And the fast color correct to do with the um, input levels down the bottom to do with the contrast is probably your best bet of adjusting um, color. Now you can press these ones like got auto black um, or auto contrast. Um, you might find, oops, that doesn't do what you want it to do. So try those. Um, and that's your, your best bet of doing that. Also, you can click on these pipettes, what's supposed to be white, uh, what's supposed to be, say, a mid-tone here. Click on that and say, okay, I want this to be my mid-tone. Um, also, you can do these ones where you can select what color should be black. So you can select a color and say, you know, that's what I want to be, be black, and it'll alter the range. Okay, we're going to have a little basic overview of color correcting in Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. I brought in some clips. These are, again, just still images um, that have color casts or tints on them. Blue, green, and red. Now, I'll start off and I'll just drag them out and put them on the timeline. Here's my blue one. I drag this out. Here's my green. And finally, I've got red. So I'm going to do some basic color correction. So each of these images has that tint on, a blue, a green, and a red. And I'll take it back here and I'll just click on the first block here, which is the blue. Now up in the um, effects down here, I need to go to color correction. I want to go to color correction. You need to find fast color corrector. And I'll just drop that onto that first clip, which is the blue. Now we've looked at before where we can expand and close this down. I'll just you can squeeze it up a little bit to um, close it down slightly so we see what's going on here. Now basically in color correction, what you would do if you've got a blue cast, you would drag out in the color circle here to the opposite. So the opposite color um, to blue over here is looking at something like yellow, um, yellow, orangey color. Now, keep your eye on the uh, window up here. It's got a bit of a cast on it on the uh, up here. And if I just click in the center of the dot and then drag out, and you'll see it will start to neutralize a bit. You can go too far and it'll go blue, but that should do it. You can turn it up this way and around there, more or less to a yellow range will do it there. Okay. So you've got that um, set up um, on there. Right, so that's that one done. Then if we move on to here, uh, move the timeline head along, and here we are, again, this is green. Same thing applies, we'll drag our fast color filter on top of it. We'll move this up. Now again, it's green, so green is here, and we're gonna drag out sort of towards the magenta 
So again, how much you do it, it's up to you. You can actually move these, which will have another effect on them, but I'll just leave this down. And you'll see there'll be some improvement and you can play around with it to suit where it was. But ideally, it's better than that. And you're dragging it out the opposite way of the cast. Uh, or the tint, move it along here. This one's a little bit ready. Again, I drop the filter on there for fast uh, color correct. I've got it here in the window. And again, this is red. So red's up here. And if I drag out the opposite to the um, to red, and you'll see it will start to neutralize. It's up to you how much you you know want to do it, or the intensity of however you're going to do it in small increments and move the slider. Um, but that gives you an idea of how it can work. Okay, uh, I've got two bits of footage here. Um, the one in the source window here is quite high contrast. It's been taken a digital SLR and the settings have been upped. Now, sometimes that can happen with automatic settings. You've got to set on Vivid or an automatic setting and, and you don't know it's doing that and it's increasing the contrast. Now, what's happened here on the one on the right is this has been taken by reducing all the contrast and saturation and the brightness and taking those down. Now, you do find if something's shot too contrasty, that might be fine if you don't want to do any adjustments and also pictures look a lot better when they're contrasty than flat. Um, you, you want that effect and you might just do it. But the issue is once you bring it into a video editing program is once you've upped the contrast, saturation and color, it's very hard to sort of pull that down without losing any quality or getting artifacts on your image. It makes it a little bit difficult to adjust it later without um, losing any of the uh, detail from your image. Okay, so first up, I've got this little clip here. Um, again, it's been shot flat. Um, everything's been taken down. And I'll just use the effects again. If I go up to effects, I go to color correction. And again, I'll just drag on the fast color correction. Once that's on there, we go up to the um, effects window up here. And we've got that where it's controlling it. And also I'll go down to reference monitor. Now the reference monitor for something like a, a moving image is a little bit different than what you've seen when we had before. Where we had just this cross where we have a, there's so many tones going on here. That's different. So it looks a lot different, but it, but it works in the same way. And we'll just take this down and we'll go to where we went before with the input levels and change them around to see what's happening. If we're moving the, um, say the highlights, which you're moving, you'll see it's moving up the graph and just stretching things out in the uh, reference window. Then if we go around the other way, this will push it down a bit. So you've got the blacks and coming along there and doing that. Um, now the other thing you can do is move the center slider, which does it sort of overall. And might be a little bit of a delay there. So you're taking it along and that might be your best way to adjust. Now again, um, you can apply the same fast color correction to footage as well as we just did it with those um, static JPEG images we imported. Just drag and drop the filter here. Then we've got the color circle here and you just do the same thing. You sort of pull it out. Um, you can choose the move the intensity of it here on here so you've got to be pretty careful how you do it but it depends on what, what you sort of got if you I'm dragging it to more of the greens is making the greens a little bit more vivid ideally you're trying to get rid of a cast or maybe you might be want to put a color or a tint on it or maybe wanting to have it look realistic so you're just moving it around if you haven't got an overall tint on it it might be difficult so all you're doing is trying to bring it up so the, the picture looks the way you want it to be. Another one to look at within the color correction folder of the effects filters is color balance. So I click on color balance and drag that to the clip in the timeline. Now it's got lots of different values along here. Um, it's got ones to do with shadows, mid-tones, and also the highlights. And it's a case that sometimes you might have, have a cast or a um, a tint on any one of those and you can change those around. 
Now, say for example, you wanted to do it on the mid-tones green, you click there and the slider appears. And if you take that up, it will start to change certainly just the greens there's quite a lot of greens in this image so you can turn that around if you wanted to come along and do it with the blues if we take the blues up you can see it changes the overall blue of the image and you can take that down and adjust it so this just does it you know broken down into the shadow mid-tone and highlights and you can move those around so that might be another way but ideally you wouldn't just do one you'd probably do more than one one is three-way color correction um, three-way color correction gives you a number of different options might get a little bit more complicated and what we've got here is when we come up to the top we've got our um, three different um, ones to represent shadows midtones very similar to what we, we've certainly used before and you can you know come along and you can um, change the input levels through the contrast and then you can come along and change these colors for whatever you want them to be. Uh, we drag those out. You know, usually what you are doing is pulling these out sometimes in opposite directions to get a, a different feel and changing what they are in there. But that's a, a certainly another option you can play around with. That's getting a little bit more complicated, um, but it might be of use for you to do. You can do it master, so you can do them on all. Um, those ones but usually you're trying to look towards pulling them out in different directions but again that's something that you need to explore later on when you get into it a little bit more now with any of these you can actually uh, come along and you can split your view uh, you can do it horizontal or vertical and it gives a split so as we change it it gives us an idea of what it was like before and what we're starting to change it to so it gives you some idea of how you're improving it or changing the tint. Okay, you might want to look at other things for creative stuff to do with something like a tint. And again, we're in the uh, color correction. And if you go to uh, tint, and I'll drag that again onto my clip, you'll see up here it's just gone to um, almost like black and white. Now, if I go click on mount of tint, if I turn that down, it's, it's reducing a little bit, making it look as though it's a pretty dull day and it's coming along and that's the tint up there basically so if i click on there i can select something else say a bit of a ready color and i click on there and it'll do it to red and if i drag that up it'll do the intensity of how red it's actually making um, within my image so that may be of use to you now it's always important when you've um, been playing around with a color effect or any of the effects from the uh, effects panel and um, maybe to get rid of them. Um, if you've been playing around with them, you can actually click on them here and you can clear and that will clear those uh, properties for that effect away from that clip. And it's just a way of keeping it simple so you're not getting in a bit of a, a mix up of how you put an effect on top of effect. Now the next one's gonna look at is further down is to do with image control. And this one's gonna be black and white. So we drag it on here and that does just a simple thing where it turns that clip into black and white pretty much straightforward i will clear that again we have one here for uh, color balance i drag that on and that's again as we've seen before very simplistic ways of changing the color balance with red green and blue that you might wish to use very similar to the ones we've looked at in any case already and um, gamma cor correction is to do with um, contrast mainly and um, you can move that up and down gamma correction will change the contrast again this is a bit of a flat image that's come in and it will change the contrast of that image okay i'll just get rid of that right mouse click and clear 